Hello again and welcome to another Morning and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another Imperial Guard 10th edition data sheet. And once again, we shall be taking a look at a Forge World unit. But rather than delving into the murky depths, this time we shall be soaring high in the sky as we take a look at the Avenger Strike Fighter. And so without further ado, let's not mess around any further. Let's chunks away and fly right into today's video. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief overview of what the hell this unit actually is. Basically, the Avenger Strike Fighter is a ground attack aircraft. Its number one job is not to dogfight, whilst it can do that, but really the Imperium likes to use it for strafing ground targets. You want to think of this kind of like the A-10 Warthog. If there's a column of tanks going down a highway, the Imperium will call in some strike fighters and they will just strafe it to death. At least that's how it works in the fluff. But what about the crunch? Well, let's get into the nitty gritty of this data sheet now. And we'll start off with the stat line. Like all aircraft, the Avenger has a movement value of 20 plus inches. That means that it has to move a minimum of 20 inches each time but it has no maximum move. So in theory, you could fly this from one end of the board to the other with no problems whatsoever. As long as you can place the model down, because you still need to be able to place the model without it landing on any enemy units, you can go as far as you need to. Unfortunately, whilst the Avenger is fast, it is quite fragile for a guard vehicle. It's only toughness 9 with a 3 plus save. This puts it more in the same ballpark as a Chimera rather than something like a Hellhound and definitely not a Lehman Russ or a Rogal Dawn. Here's the thing. It's still a vehicle though. So when we say it's fragile, we, we mean in terms of comparing it to other vehicles. But your opponent won't just be able to spray some spare bolt of fire at this thing and blow it up. No, he's going to need to dedicate proper anti-tank to get rid of the Avenger Strike Fighter. And with it having 14 wounds, it kind of falls into the same category as the Chimera in, in many ways, which is it always seems to take a little bit more anti-tank than your opponent wants to dedicate towards it. Get rid of it. Point is... If your opponent wants to destroy it, they can do, but they might have to put a bit more into it than they want to. Finally, it's got a leadership value of 7+, plus, which is standard issue in the guard, and it's got an OC of 0. That's right, it's not got an OC of 1, it's got an OC of 0. This is because it's an aircraft, and really, the model that's on the board represents something that's flying quite high up in the sky. So it doesn't have any capability of holding objectives itself. But with its firepower, it can sure make it difficult for your opponent to hold on to them too. Speaking of which, let's now get to the weapons that this bad boy is equipped with. As standard, the Avenger Strike Fighter comes equipped with the Avenger Bolt Cannon. A heavy stubber, two large cannons, and its armored hull. And it has no war gear options. You get what you are given, and you will like it. And the funny thing is, you probably will like it. The Avenger, it, it's packed as a meat. It's a spicy meatball. The Avenger bolt cannon, obviously, is a pretty unique weapon to the vehicle. It is the signature system, and it has sustained hits one with a range of 36 inches. It's got 10 shots. Ballistic skill, 4 plus, strength 6, AP minus 1, and 2 damage. I kind of see the bolt cannon as the bastard love child of an assault cannon and a heavy bolter, and yet it got the firepower of both combined, because it's got the strength uh, of the assault cannon, but it's got the damage of the heavy bolter, and it's got the sustained hits of the heavy bolter, but then it's got the shots of, well, more shots than an assault cannon and a heavy bolter combined. It's a pretty good anti-infantry weapon. And with it being strength 6, don't completely discount its anti-tank capabilities. Look, it's clearly designed for shredding infantry. Okay, definitely. 
But with strength six, it means that unless you're getting into the really heavy stuff, the toughness 12 and higher, you will be wounding your opponent's vehicles on fives, which with 10 shots, stayed hits, more than likely you're going to get two or three of those on the enemy vehicle. The number one drawback of the Avenger Bolt Cannon in my mind is the AP and the Ballistic Skill of 4+. plus. Now the Ballistic Skill of 4+, plus is actually relatively simple for us to fix. If you take Regimental Attaches, then the Officer of the Fleet in there can designate one enemy unit that he can see and is within 30 inches of and all of your flyers get plus one to hit. So it's very possible for you to get your Avenger hitting on threes. If you've got a Lord Solar knocking about the place, he can order the Avenger Strike Fight. It's an Astra Militarum unit. So with the Attaché and the Lord Solar, it's possible to get your Strike Fight hitting on twos. That's probably a little overkill, and you're probably going to have your Lord Solar orders going on something a bit more valuable like a rogal dawn or a tank something like that but it's an option to be aware of if you flesh your motor pool out with the avenger you can't really go wrong with having a spare order go onto that if you've got one flying around fixing the ap of the avenger strike fighter is a little trickier but it's not too bad it doesn't have the squadron or regimental keyword so that means it can't benefit from the fields of fire stratagem However, it can benefit from the Lehman Russ Exterminator's Withering Hail ability because that just boosts all other Astra Militarum units. Also, if you've not got Lehman Russ Exterminators in your list, but you still want to try and help the Avenger with its AP situation, you can always use Hellhounds. They can remove cover. And really, that's the main problem for the Avenger with the Avenger Bolt Cannon. Because it's only AP minus one, if you're shooting an enemy that's in cover, it's like it's AP dash. You've got the Hellhound in there, at least it gets to have that AP minus one feel like it's doing something. So the Avenger is a good unit, but it's definitely going to need some support. It's going to need either an attache or an order to make it hit well, and it's going to need either an exterminator or a Hellhound to make it hurt good. As for its other weapon systems, the Heavy Stubber is a nice bit of extra DACA. It's just like slapping Heavy Stubbers on all of your other vehicles, right? It's three to six extra shots that might plink a wound off here and there. What I really like about the Avenger is the two LAS cannons. Now, firstly, I like the fact that it's two LAS cannons, not one twin LAS cannon. I'm always a big fan of more shots over one better shot. Um, and I like the fact that the LAS cannon helps cover some of the weaknesses of the bolt cannon. The bolt cannon's got anti-infantry sorted. The LAS cannons help the Avenger be a true multi-threat unit. Your opponent can't just ignore it and go, oh, well, I've taken loads of mechanized stuff, so I don't need to worry about the Avenger. It's only got that bolt cannon. No, two LAS cannons, which, again, can benefit from orders and attaches. You could have these LAS cannons hitting on threes and twos pretty quickly they are they are going to start tearing chunks out of enemy armor and considering that we are in quite a mechanized elite meta at the start of 10th edition those last cannons are vitally important it just means that whatever game you go into whatever matchup you find yourself in the Avenger, it's not going to be the most specialized it's not going to be the best unit for the job but it's never going to be a bad unit i kind of see it as the el classico the lemurus el classico of the guard air corps it's never going to be the best option it's never going to be the worst option but it's always going to be able to do something in each game that you take it in it's going to have a good target no matter what attention guardsmen this is an announcement by the departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off full action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Full out!
We then get to the Avenger Strike Fighter's main ability, and it's a bit... It's a bit hit or miss, to be honest. Fiery Vengeance. Once per turn in your opponent's shooting phase, when another friendly Ash Militarm unit within six inches of this model is destroyed by an attack made by a unit that can fly, one model from your army with this ability can use it. If it does, after the attacking unit has finished making its attacks, that model can shoot as if it were your shooting phase. When resolving the attack, it can only target that enemy unit, and only if it's an eligible target. That's quite a mouthful. I'll put it in layman's terms. If your opponent has a unit that can fly and it de destroys something that's near the Avenger, the Avenger can shoot the enemy unit that hurt you. That's that's how it works. On the one hand, it's quite nice to get an out-of-sequence shooting. And being a flyer, you'll be able to see most things on the board because you can see over the towering ruins and stuff like that. So... The problem with it is it's quite restrictive. You have to be within six inches of the strike fighter. Now that is quite easy to try and manipulate. Um, you can have units that are on the front line that are likely to take damage from your opponent uh, and have the strike fighter nearby. The Avenger is on a big base, on a flying base. So being with the six inches might not be so bad. You know, six inches to the left, six inches to the right, front and back. You've got quite a, a quite a bubble there. Um, but it's it's difficult. It, it's not... With, with the movement of the Avenger, it's going to be tricky sometimes to always line that up the way you want to, right? The other problem is that it can only be an enemy unit with fly. Now, it's not flyer... Not aircraft, so it's this, this thing isn't just dogfighting. It can be any sort of skimmers and stuff like that, any jetpack troops, any bikers. But still, there's another sort of caveat there. So whilst the ability is not totally unusable, out of all of the things on the Event Strike Fighters datasheet, this is the thing that gets me the least excited. The last thing to mention about the Avenger Strike Fighter specifically is its points cost. It's very reasonable at 130 points. You've got a decent stat line there, good firepower. There's a lot to like at that price point. And personally, if you were to ask me to take an Avenger Strike Fighter or a Hellhound, I'd probably pick the Strike Fighter every time, just looking at that data sheet. But, and it is a big but, and I cannot lie, there is a huge problem with Strike Fighter. And it has nothing to do with its data sheet and everything to do with the aircraft rules, the fundamental core rules for aircraft in 40k 10th edition. They're just a bit rubbish. Unlike other units in your army, aircraft can't start on the board, have to go into strategic reserve. And they just go into basic bog standard strategic reserve like most other units. And you might think that's not such a big deal. I put like Cyclopses in reserve. I have things in deep strike. It's not so bad that things can't come until turn two. The big problem with aircraft is that when they come in on that turn two, they just come in six inches. They don't get to fly on the board and start zooming around or anything like that. They have to stay six inches on the border, just like every other unit does that comes in. And so you're waiting until turn three until you can start zooming this thing around and having a good time with it. And you're also limited to the fact that your opponent can screen you out because it's coming in from normal strategic reserve. So... If your opponent is able to push you back a little bit or do some good screening, your strike fighter might not come in turn one, turn two, come on, on your board edge, and it's not till turn three when it starts flying around and getting to shoot the targets that it really wants to shoot at, which makes it a bit not great that you have, it feels like your unit is spending two out of five turns 40 percent of the game in a bit of a bad situation now you do have ways around this you can use rapid ingress which means if your opponent goes first at the end of their turn two you can rapid ingress your flyer in and then you can start 
zooming it about any of their movement phases, say, and then you can start zooming it about. That is true, but then there's obviously risk with that because if you bring it in that time, you might get to start zooming it about and getting those targets that you want, but also your opponent has a chance to shoot it and kill it. So it's just the fact that the aircraft rules for 40k 10th edition are a bit poo. And you're going to have to think about spending that CP. It just makes it just a finicky unit to use. But with all of that said, I do think the Avenger is still a good unit. And how I think it is best utilized is as a cheap way to help flesh out your motor pool. Rather than taking something like a Hydra or a Hellhound, you could put an Avenger Strike Fighter in there. Even with fairly minimal support, it's going to do more damage than a lot of those other units. And I would just take the one. I'd pick either an Avenger or a Lightning or some of the other flyers that we're going to be taking a look at and reviewing in future videos. I would pick one flyer and I'd go, that's the one that I'm going to include in my army. I wouldn't spam them. When I first saw the Avenger at the beginning of 10th edition, I hadn't fully appreciated how the aircraft rules worked. I thought that we'd see spamming of Avengers and Lightnings and all that kind of stuff. I actually don't think that's how it's going to work now. With their ability to get screened out, with their limitations of strategic reserves, and the fact that they need a decent amount of CP and other unit support, I feel like taking an Avenger or an aircraft does work, but I wouldn't be spamming them. At least that's what I think. But, of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man! Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like the Avenger Strike Fighter? And have you used it in any games and how did it perform? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys so much your incredible generosity is a massive part of how i'm able to do more do glory full time and it is a big driving force behind the channel but i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always I'll see you guys next time <laughs>